copyrighted program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Up on the police calling all cars, hunting all cars, broadcast 94. Cars in the city to take notice. Go to the corner of Figaro and Adams at once regarding a bank robbery. That's all. Rose and Cook. <laughs> Every boy and every girl listening to Calling All Cars is entitled to a free gift. In fact, you can get several free gifts. Just listen to the announcement at the close of this program. Rio Grande delivers more value than any other gasoline. Besides the free gifts for girls and boys, Rio Grande gives every motorist more value than ever before for his gasoline money. In the first place, you get Tetra Ethel, added to Rio Grande cracked gasoline at no increase in price. You get more speed, more power. It is easy for any gasoline to claim these superiorities, but Rio Grande offers proof that it is the fastest, most powerful gasoline in this market. What greater proof can you ask than the selection of Rio Grande cracked in preference over all other gasoline? To power the police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment of cities like Los Angeles, Oakland, Berkeley, Bakersfield, San Diego County, and Maricopa County, Arizona, and many, many others. Of all the emergency cars operated in this territory, more use Rio Grande Crack than any other brand. Doesn't that prove you will get greater value for your gasoline money when you ask for Rio Grande Crack gasoline? And now it is our pleasure to present Captain H. S. Seeger, commanding the robbery and narcotics squad of the Los Angeles Police Department. Captain Seeger. Good evening, friends. There seems to be no length to which criminals will not go in carefully planning a crime which they believe will put them on easy streets for the rest of their lives. Physical and mental energy is expended in lawless enterprises which, if directed in proper and honest channels, might well return the authors of the plans a much greater compensation than they receive for their criminal activity. For these men always slip up. They forget something. They omit an important detail, and then the law is on their trail. None of them get rich quick. None of them retire to a life of ease. Do you remember Herb Wilson? He worked months planning the robbery of a safe in Detroit in which it was reported there reposed $13 million. The plans went through with military precision, but the acetylene gave out in his torch. There was only a quarter inch of steel left between him and his fortune. He was a smart man, but he slipped up once, and then again, and again, and finally landed in the penitentiary. His case is similar to the one you are about to hear, in which three young men worked with an intensity they never would have felt in an honest occupation, toiled like slaves in a dark, dank hole underground, burying toward a fortune which they never got. It is a dismal, rainy night in February 1932. In a small, badly furnished apartment, three men sit talking. I wish this rain had let up. I'm getting sick and tired of sitting around doing nothing. Uh, you and me both, Jim. If I don't raise some dough pretty soon, there's going to be no happy home for me. I'm so glad I can't even buy a package of cigarettes. Yeah, here, Bill, I have one of mine. Oh, thanks. Right? Yeah, I'd need my match. Yeah. Boy, am I fed up on this bum and cigarettes, meals, and everything else. I don't know how you stand it so well, Mac. I'd go nuts passing out cigarettes to people like me. What would you boys say if I told you of a way to make some dough? Plenty of dough. Huh? Say that again. I got an idea that means plenty of dough to all of us if you boys want to go into it with me. It means a lot of hard work, but it's worth it. Say, listen, I can't think of anything at this point that I wouldn't do with some real cash. What's the dope? 
Well, remember a year or so ago, a couple of guys tunneled into a bank and grabbed 15,000 bucks in cool, hard cash? Yeah, I remember. They got caught and sent up. Right. But they made mistakes. Mistakes we can profit by. You mean that you want to rob a bank? That's exactly what I do mean. And I've got it all figured out so there's not a chance in the world for a slip of if we take our time and make plans carefully. I don't know about that, Mac. I can send you up for a long, long time for a little thing like bank robbery. I don't know, but what I'd rather bum cigarettes than take such a long time. Well, of course, if you boys don't want to get in the gravy, it's all right with me. Well, I'm sorry to see a couple of guys with me go turning down a gold mine because I don't have to take a chance. Well, we made go all right, but, boy, I still think it's a big risk. Makes us so sure to be safe. Are you interested enough to listen to my idea? Sure, why not? If we don't like it, we don't have to go, Jim. Might be a good thing at that. Well, it's okay with me to hear what you've got, Max. Well, I'm not at all sure I'm going to like the idea. Knowing you two boys as well as I do, I've got a hunch you'll like it plenty. Anyway, here's the dope. There's a branch bank at Figaro and Adams, and right down the middle of the street there's a sewer pipe with not more than a foot of water in it. Now, if we were to get in there and dig a tunnel of the side <laughs> Okay. 
And it stopped, and I didn't hear it again until just now. Hey, listen a minute. Can't seem to tell where it's coming from, can you? First it's one side, then the other. And all over the place. And maybe they're working on the floor. Well, anyway, it's not in this room. Ah, it stopped. Yeah. Well, well, I'm not going to worry about it. And I've got other things to do. I think I'll take a look around outside, Ben. Eh? Darn noise has got my ghost. Yeah, I'll be back later if you're still working. All right, Bill. Stop in if there's a light. Good night. Good night. Probably an overcautious old fool, but it doesn't sound like no dripping faucet to my ears. on hard steel. Realizing that every minute counts, Waters leaves the bank, rushes to the nearby hall box and contacts headquarters. Explaining the situation, he asks for all available police and detectives. Then returns to the bank and waits, not knowing what to expect and hoping against hope that the reinforcements will arrive in time. And in the man-made tunnel under the bank,
On their way out of the tube, the two detectives discovered a paper sack with bread crusts in it, some discarded flashlight batteries, and a torn sleeve from a man's coat. Adding these to their scanty collection of clues, they returned to headquarters to begin the tedious task of learning the identity of the suspect. At police headquarters, a laundry mark comes to light in the line of the coat sleeve. A telegram to the makers of the batteries reveals that the discarded batteries had been delivered to a drugstore less than a mile from the scene of the attempted burglary. The wrapper taken from the paper sack bears the name of a bakery that is found to be one block away from the drugstore. Armed with these facts, let veteran censors scour the neighborhood, inquiring at all cleaning establishments to trace the laundry mark. In a little shop on Estrella Avenue, a branch cleaner recognizes the mark as belonging to one Jim Matson, who lives nearby. Acting on this information, the two detectives arrive at Matson's apartment only to find that he had moved out a month before and left no forwarding address. And in a small apartment, less than two blocks away... They got wise to us. We're not in the can, are we? Listen, boys, those clocks he'd have spending so much time running around in a circle, they'd never think of looking for us here. Yeah, it was pretty smart of you, Max, thinking of sticking in this apartment so close to the bank. The cops are probably everywhere but near here. Well, I didn't think so much of the idea, but I'll have to admit, Mac, it seems to be working. Three days since we got out of that lousy tunnel, and the papers have already forgotten us. Yeah, and within three weeks, we'll have another bank lined up. Another bank? Sure, yeah, you don't think that just because we mopped this job, we're going to quit, do you? It only takes one good haul, and we're set for life. You know, Mac, there's one thing bothering me. How in the devil did the board get wise to us? If we could figure that out, we'd be better off the next time. It's just pure luck, Jim. I tell you, there wasn't a chance in the million of finding us. Just one of those things, luck. Yeah, I wish we had a little of that. Yeah, we wouldn't be laying around this apartment waiting. Hey, listen, if you guys will just have a little patience, we'll be sitting pretty. I spotted a bank over on Jefferson last night that looks like the worst to me. There's a man who right in front of it, and the vault's only about 12 feet away from the opening. So all we got to do is to sit tight until this mess blows over, then get a closer look at the setup out there and go to work. It's a cinch. Well, say, Jim, what time does Mabel do here? We don't want to be sitting around when she arrives. Oh, that's right. Well, what time is it now? Yeah, 2.30. Oh, you ought to get home by 3. I guess you better get out. Now, where will we meet you tonight, Mike? Mm, your wife's going to stay here? No, she's going out somewhere for dinner. I told her I was going over to the city office again. All right. Well, let's all get together here about 6. Okay by me. Yeah, me too. And I'll see you boys here at 6 tonight. All right. So long. Detectives led veteran Spencer canvassing the neighborhood for any scraps of information. Run into good luck. There's another apartment now, sir. Let's ask the landlady. Yeah. You know, I'm beginning to get tired of a fight of apartments. It makes the 15th we've been in today. We've gotten the same answer to all of them. Never heard of any matching. Well, here goes nothing. You push the buzzer this time, Herb. Maybe it'll bring some luck. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We're looking for a man by the name of Matson. Tim Matson. You any tenant here by that name? Matson? Uh, no, I don't, but I can... Is there I... anybody staying here that has a similar name? Well, let me think. I, I might have moved in about a month ago. Oh, wait a minute. There's a Mr. Jim Watson lives here, and if I remember rightly, he moved in just about that time. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, it was the day that my son got his job over at the bakery. You know, That's like our man. Right. What if you could tell us a little about this man? You know if he works? Why, uh, yes, I think he does. At least he leaves here every night about 9 o'clock, and he takes a sack of lunch with him, and it's he all that... He leaves here about 9 at night. Herb begins to look as though we're on the right track. Now, what apartment has he? Number 201. He's on the second floor, right off the stairs. Hey, wait a minute. What do you men want to know all this for? You friends of his? We're detectives, ma'am. Los Angeles Police Department. Detectives? Oh, I might have known this would happen. Just as I was getting back on my feet. Oh, what's he done? This may not be the man we're after, ma'am, but if it is, we want him for a little attempted bank robbery. Bank robbery? A bank robbery in my No, house. don't get excited, ma'am. We just want to talk to him and make sure. There won't be any trouble. You know if he's in right now? Oh, no. Mr. Watson went out a little while ago, but I... Well, if you don't mind, then, we'll go up and take a look at the apartment. Well, I, I don't know if I should let him. You out. wouldn't want to prevent us from arresting a thief, would oh, you? heaven forbid. Well, I guess it's all right. But what if Mr. Watson comes home while you're up there for fire? Just let him come up. Now, don't say a word to him about our being there. In that way, you can help us a lot, ma'am. All right, but I hope I don't have to talk to him. I'm so nervous. I'm sure he thinks there was something wrong. Have you I... a key to the apartment? Uh, yes, sir, right here. Thanks. All right, Hal. Let's take a look around up there. And don't forget, ma'am, don't say anything to anyone. I promise you there'll be no disturbance if we can help him. Well, all right, but I tell you, my nerves are so upset I'll never be the same again. <laughs> 
Better take a look in the bathroom. All the closets, sir. Just to be on the safe side. Yeah, right.
But unfortunately for them, a night watchman happened to hear the sound of a chisel made on the steel vault and turned in an alarm. I told you that lousy chisel made too much noise. Oh, you told him the chisel made too much noise, eh, Bill? Well, you were right. Now, what do you boys say to this? Nothing. All right. In the little tunnel, we found several things belonging to the men who managed to get away from us. Among these things was a torn coat sleeve. I have it right here. Have you ever seen this before, Jim? I... No. I've never seen it. Well, that's funny. How about these trousers here? Have you ever seen them? I... Why, yeah, they're mine. Doesn't it strike you funny that you've never seen the coat sleeve? Yet it's out of a coat that matches these trousers? I knew it. I knew we'd get caught. You said it was well, perfectly fine. Well, you said it was perfectly fine. Well, you said it was perfectly fine. Well, what do you say now, boys? Are you going to tell us about it or not? It'll go a little easier for you if you do. All right. I suppose we might as well. We did it. It was the first job we pulled. Yeah. Whose idea was it? Mac. He said it was perfectly safe. Unfortunately, McIntosh, there's no such thing as a safe crime. You may get away with it for a little while, but in the end, you'll get caught. And then it's a tough hey, rap. Listen, I don't know what's going on around here, but I know I'm not going to be real over to jail. These guys are nuts saying I planned the job. Why, I haven't even with them. They've been going around robbing banks. I haven't known anything about it. The frame up, that's what it is. That's mighty interesting, Mac, but I'm afraid it's a little too late to be effective. We've got enough evidence on you three to put you safely away for a long, long time. And that's exactly what we're going to do. <laughs> I swear to tell the truth, all the truth, and I get the truth off the gun. I do. What's your name? Uh, How do you mean that, sir? Occupation? Uh, cleaner. Okay. Uh, 326 in the quarter at Stella Avenue, North Angeles. Come over here, please. You're in the cleaning business, Mr. Russell? Uh, yes, sir. In your business, you see lots of people every day. Quite a few. Would you remember a face if you'd seen it more than once? I believe I would, sir. Do you recognize that man sitting over there? The one who's known to the court as James Watson? Yes, sir. I cleaned some of his clothes. Do you remember what he told you his name was? Uh, yes, sir. Jim, or rather, Tim Matson. You were sure the name was Matson and not Watson? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Russell, here's a suit of clothes. Do you recognize it? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, whose is it? Uh, and how are you so sure of this? Because, sir, I, I've examined the lining, and it has a laundry mark which I use for Mr. Matson's clothes. Mm -hmm. And you can be absolutely certain that this suit belongs to Mr. Matson, the man sitting over there? Yes, sir, absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Russell. That'll be all. <laughs> And Thomas McIntosh stand and face the court. James Watson, William Watson, Thomas McIntosh, have you anything to say before this court passes sentence on you? Uh, nothing. No. After hearing the testimony offered against you in this case, this court feels that there is no doubt as to your guilt. However, there is one thing that throws a different light on this case. The testimony given during this trial made it apparent that one of you is the man most guilty. That one of you was responsible for the planning of this attempted crime. Therefore, in sentencing you, I feel that I am justified in my decision. James Watson and William Watson, I sentence you to six months in the Los Angeles County Jail to start immediately and run in consecutive days. This is the lightest sentence I am allowed by law to pass on you. And in doing it, I hope that both of you will think twice before you resort again to crime for a living. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Judge. Thomas McIntosh, I'm not going to be so lenient with you. It is your type of man that instigates just such schemes as this. Therefore, it is the sentence of this court that you be confined in San Quentin Penitentiary for a period of not less than one and not more than ten years. <laughs> Every boy and girl listening, Rio Grande offers several free gifts. To get these gifts, merely go tonight or tomorrow to your neighborhood Rio Grande Craft Gasoline Service Station. Ask about Rio Grande's free gifts. 
The attendant will give you the latest copy of the Calling All Cars News, a big, double-sized special edition, and it contains illustrations and descriptions of all the free gifts. Choose the ones you want. You can have them all at no cost. Parents will want their boys and girls to have these gifts. We urge you to drive your youngsters to the Rio Grande service station. Get a copy of the Calling All Cars News for yourself. It's full of true detective stories, latest movie news, and interesting articles, and it's free. While you're in the Rio Grande station, try a tank full of Rio Grande cracked gasoline. Find out for yourself why it is used in more police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and emergency equipment than any other gasoline. It delivers police car performance at no extra cost. Los Angeles Police calling all cars, attention all cars, cancellation broadcast 94. The sex in this case now in custody. And that's all. Over the first. This is Frederick Lindsley bidding you good.